So, my boys and girls, anybody watching? Oh, they have two there people. A few people. Oh, it only says only one's watching on my page. Yeah, I know. It doesn't really keep up lately. Hang on a second. Okay, I just got back from a trip in the North Woods, so I thought I would uh, start watching videos, and of course, I found I found a video for us to, to take a look at. So apparently in uh, Granville, Colorado, I think it is. Is it Grand Granby, Colorado? They had a little. They showed a little video clip to kids in third and fourth grade, and you know, it is kind of on the edge. But you know, when you think about it, I mean, like, what are we, what are we trying to keep kids away from? But anyway, so we'll play the video, and uh, you can hear what they, they show part of it. Universal Kids celebrates Pride Month. Here's the video shown to young Granby kids that has parents angry and frustrated. Pride means you should be able to be free. All my life I never really felt like a boy and I don't really feel like a girl, so I'd rather be both. There were other similar clips in the video seen by dozens of 8, 9, and 10-year-olds without parents knowing about it. The school showed it to students last week to kick off Pride Month. When I saw the video, I was uh, I was extremely disturbed. Kyle Reyes has... Kyle? Okay, no, I thought, I thought they randomly interviewed Kyle, right? But then, no, he's on uh, he's on somebody somebody else's channel. In fact, his face is all over the fucking place. So he was, in other words, he was already disturbed before he watched the video. He was quite disturbed, yeah. And uh, so, anyway, we'll, we'll see what Kyle has to say here. I wonder if uh, let's see, four forty-seven. Yeah, well. We'll just play a little bit of what Kyle has to say, and there's a part that that really stunned me and really kind of like uh, made me wonder what kind of a fucking world we're living in exactly. Yeah, so. and we, we might need to back up a little, but was he wasn't he was he wearing a suit the other time? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. He doesn't sure. look good in that suit. I mean, that suit no, is no, not that's, right for him. That's a and, shitty suit. Yeah, and he should know it. He has he no looks, sense. He looks really good in this ball cap or this cap. But look to the right, okay. What we got is a bighorn gun safe. And above that is, as for me and you, something like we will both serve the Lord. And there's an American flag. And then there are two heavy artillery shells sitting on each side yeah. of the gun thing, right? Yeah. So it tells you a little bit about this guy. But let's just see what he has to say. Uh, we have a, a duty and a responsibility as parents to look out for the hearts and souls of our little kids as they are attacked in the spiritual warfare that's happening across the country. Uh, and I'll give you a great example. So we just found out two months ago from our eight-year-old that back during Thanksgiving, the teacher was reading the kids a book about the pilgrims. And there was a page in the book that said the pilgrims just wanted to be able to worship their God in the way that they chose appropriate, or something to that effect. The teacher took out the word God so that nobody would be offended. Well, we didn't find out about that from our kiddo until just a couple of months ago, because these things are happening subliminally, subtly, quietly. And, and she told us about that months ago, what else is happening that we don't know about? What else are they forcing into the minds of our kids to confuse them and to change the narrative to, to replace science and math and reading with social and emotional learning? They're literally swapping out lessons in, in basic education for social and emotional learning. It, it, we're so, in some terrifying times. Okay, did you hear that? How does it... How does not mentioning God force an idea into somebody's no, head? And how does that replace math and science to not mention God? He's not making any sense at all. Also, and, looking at the sequence of this, did they like videotape the teacher reading that and then have a copy of the teacher's book where, I where guess it said God, but she left it out? How, I mean, what is this? 
His, his um, daughter might have been reading it, and she noticed that she left the word God out. But, like, when I do readings for AA, uh, I will leave the word God out, and I'll just say either universe or I will, I will uh, if it's appropriate, I will just skip the word God, and it has the same meaning. Like, And, and so they want to be able to, to worship the way they wanted, right? You don't have to say yeah. worship God. You can just say worship. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. a it's a distinction without a difference. Right. Anyway, this, uh, let's see if I can. And she told us about that months ago. What else is happening? Okay, so that's, that's not it. So there's a couple of things. Uh, it might be right here. Right. Early, so he's completing out lessons in, in basic education for social and emotional learning. It, it, we are in some terrifying times. Okay. So, okay, we're teaching kids social and emotional learning. We are in some terrifying times. God forbid that we, and this is exactly why I'm an anti theist. Because these motherfuckers, they they don't want to accept anything, anything about psychology except what they do in church. It's all about the soul and Jesus, and 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 they don't want to accept any of the new science, that neuroscience that we have about learning, emotions, about bullying, about aggression, about fucking uh, basically bigotry. None of that shit can be taught to kids. And what happens? When I went to school in 1955, there were kids that were extremely feminine. There were big macho bullies, and the big macho bullies were beating on the other kids. And there was, mm -hmm. fuck, you know, there were bloody noses. Now there are gunfights. But, I mean, the, all of that shit was, has been going on for years in schools. And they, oh, well, just toughen up and take it from the bullies, you know. Like, there's nothing we can do about bullying. And all, all this bullshit, and kids have committed suicide over this shit for years, going all the way back to the 50s, doesn't have a fucking thing to do with sexuality. It has to do with emotional learning. And this guy, right. this guy, I can't believe what this, he's guy. <laughs> this, this guy, this guy. Smug asshole. So yeah. what he's basically advocating for is we need to protect children from being protected. We need to protect children from being safe because right. safe children make sissies and we don't yeah, want we, safe children. We want his big bruiser football boys to go beating up on the, the other kids that don't uh, feel all that macho, you know? It's just yeah. like I just want to play it again. Early swapping out lessons in, in basic education for social and emotional learning. It, it, we are in some terrifying times. Terrifying. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was not an example of, of social and emotional learning. That was just an example of a teacher maybe getting a little too picky about, you know, the separation of church and state. I don't know. Uh, maybe she has feelings where she doesn't want to acknowledge God in, in her out loud reading. But, you know, you shouldn't fucking talk about that in school anyway, because we do have separation of church. And school. Yeah. Yeah. And and even so. It's, but that's not an example of social and emotional learning. No. That's... And, you know, what's a great example of um, terrifying times? It's like um, accidentally going into somebody's yard and having them shoot at you or shoot you uh, because you're on their property and gosh, they've owned this gun and they well, haven't been able to use it to protect their property yet. Terrifying times is those two shell casings up there with the American flag with the Lord in the middle and a big yeah. orange gun safe below it. I mean, yeah. fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. <laughs> I just don't like this guy too much. Anyway, I almost uh, like fucking had a fit. But uh, let's. You want to listen to see what else he has to say? Uh, sure. If you do, I do. Otherwise, this guy has nothing to tell me. Uh, no, Early don't. swapping out lessons in well, in basic education for social and emotional learning. It, it, we are in some terrifying times. Something that you've not shown. Of, today, as I mentioned, among. Of, are you talking? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm. It's, I'm basically. I went into old man mode and started talking to the screen. My apologies. Try, try to contain. You, you can my best. get off my lawn every now and then. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, hi, Lisa, Icarus, Chris Moore, Bruce for Higgins, Worf, <laughs> Worf, Captive Desk is here. Uh, also, Ember did a really good video earlier today, uh, the Ember channel, and I really think people should also go over to Ember and not watch me. But Christians, whether or not 
you know, look, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, they have their kids in public school and they're monitoring like you guys clearly are to see what is going on. And then they might make a decision based on that. Some schools, this hasn't hit those schools yet. Others, obviously it has. Um, you, are you of a particular view when it comes up to whether or not Christians should remove their kids from public schools definitively? Is it something we should sort of follow how we feel called by God on? What What is your take on that particular question of should Christians have their kids in those schools? Man, brother, I think you and I <clears throat> could probably do a four hour long episode uh, having that conversation. I think it is a decision for the family. Listen, not every family is blessed to be in a financial position where they have a, a parent who could stay home full time to teach the kids. Um, we're, we're in some very difficult economic times. It's a very personal decision for the family. And my heart goes out to every family that's struggling to make that call right now because you're, you're being forced to choose between how do I provide for my family to make sure that we can pay the mortgage? And how do I provide for, for the hearts and souls of my child? How do I make sure that I give them the greatest opportunity to, to know and love Christ? as I can by homeschooling them, perhaps. And so what's more. So what exactly interfered with their loving Christ in leaving the word God out and uh, basically talking about, you know, kids that may have a different view on gender? I, I don't, I don't. Know. Absolutely nothing. I'm just, nothing. Uh, anyway. I got a real quick comment. And I don't know if I'm wrong to, to, to do this, but you know, this, this guy that just asked him that question and he went on that, big long spiel about there was some was he a pastor he had glasses on he was talking and asked them the question about well yeah it's cb oh christian broadcast network is what he's on so okay yeah uh let's see is he a pastor uh where are we here uh i don't, I don't know well, what he the, is when these guys get on and start talking or start asking questions yeah billy hallowell Senior Is it right to ask for a Gadar uh, reading because yeah. Yeah. there's so much suppressed gay I know. In, in the Christian community that I, I just I just can't help it. It, it. Of course, it's 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 OK to be gay. People should not feel ashamed of it at all. You shouldn't fucking except deny. you have these these harmful anti LGBT uh, Q plus um, that that hurt people through their advocacy uh, against through their policies that they in, embrace and the the MAGA that they support. So when I ask if a person sets off your gaydar, I'm usually interested in is this an evangelical person who's gay who's hurting. Um, you know, gay or trans or lesbian or uh, binary people. Yeah. But uh, that guy gave me gaydar readings. <laughs> you get my it. gaydar went off. I, I don't know how well calibrated my gaydar is, but he sure did. I think he's suppressing a lot. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Here's Ember saying proud preacher bro bashes pride. Uh, this is really good. It's this. Uh, idiot who's got like a hundred thousand followers and he goes and he interviews people at pride parades and uh gets in their fucking face and then uh he took his kid for some reason but then we don't see his kid anymore so we don't know where the fuck this is but here's here's a little cringy part right here that i'll play for you uh let me get this screen bigger uh, here we well. go. Awesome. Awesome. Just just head on up on stage. If you did that at any event, it doesn't matter that it's pride. It doesn't matter what's going on. If you did that at a Lutheran convention and just went up on stage and started causing a disruption, you would get your ass kicked out. And if someone did that at your event, you would be happy about them being kicked out. You'd be like, what a absolute unmitigated dick. Don't go over here. Look away. Don't do that. Look away. No kid should be here. No kid should be here. Says the man who brought yeah but a kid also where is the kid did he abandon the kid just to go be a dick on stage what's going on look away look away Woo! i just had to tell him to look away they don't need oh shock security came up need to be seeing this i gave you three strikes i told you i gave you three strikes i said it's gonna happen what's gonna happen tell us what's gonna happen bo like that's what you get when you tip me man tip me did somebody slip him a fiver what is that all about no, no, he's being aggressive. He's not even being passive aggressive. He's like, I'm going to fucking wreck you or some shit. And, you know, look at this big beefy dude next to him. Don't do that. Yeah. Hey, these guys are a little bit bigger than you. I would move if I were you. Yeah. Oh, cool. Threaten the security guard. 
So I think he brought his own bodyguard with him to to protect him. That that, that big dude. And the security guard is just trying to fucking get him the hell off the stage and whatever. But anyway, I will link this video. I think you should go over to Ember's channel and watch it. So uh, it's pretty good. There's that. And then uh, what do we got here? This is. Uh, I think somebody should have put a uh, just put a football in that guy's hands. And then have a, a really big linebacker or somebody like that just hanging out by a tree somewhere and then just have him bowl him under you know just violently knock him to the ground and then when the guy gets up barely gets up or whatever just go oh i'm sorry man i thought i thought you had the ball yeah and you know and here we got another video i was a stripper until jesus showed me hell amelia's testimony that's a, Amelia. That's a, Oh, it's a must watch. A must watch. <laughs> so, you know, and then there's the, uh, I I used to be gay. And then I, you know, Jesus, Jesus came in and, and like, uh, okay, Jesus hung around with 12 dudes all the time, right? <laughs> Speaking of used to be's, um, did anybody see that, um, that video of, of of not going on to Matt Powell's show and talking about his recent you mean oh, like there it is, there there it is. yeah um, yep. that, that may be why I, I thought of it because you subliminaled me I said yeah I had it up earlier yeah so. but, but anyway, um, uh, yeah so our friend uh the raging atheist you know has converted so how uh, much of Matt Powell's ministry slash methodology did not seem to, I think I only made it like three quarters of the way through the talk. Yeah. Well, how much of that did knock, um, he, he said he wasn't firm or whatever. I, no, he didn't affirm any of the, the okay. gay thing and all that shit. But, but the fact that he went on his fucking channel, it's like, come on, Ronnie, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck is wrong with you? It's like, it's okay. If you've converted to Christianity or you now believe in God. I don't give a fuck. But if you're going to hang out with Matt Powell and Kent Hovind, I mean, what the fuck, Ronnie? What the fuck? <laughs> I I do not do not approve of that shit at all. So, I mean, I don't know what the fuck there's part of the... Interview. And when he found out that he was wrong, and when God himself touched the life of Paul, Jesus said to Paul, he says, why... The experience was, man, I'm really glad I didn't declare myself a Buddhist. So I don't think that that's really a possibility, but I'm open to everything. But I, I had this conversation with, with my dad. I'm like, Dad, you know, it would be really easy and probably profitable for me right now to, just to, to declare Christianity. You know, the atheist would say I'm another Brett Keen, just grifting, whatever. But, like, I could use my story as the raging atheist and make a hell of a profit as a Christian preacher. But if that's my path, I want it to be a genuine one. I don't want it to be. You know, to be fair, he looks pretty goddamn good right now. I mean, he, he something transformative happened to him. And what happened, I guess, is some guy died outside of his apartment door. Some dude he knew died of a drug overdose. And he got a job that he had applied for that he really, really wanted. So those two events somehow melted him down and he became a believer because he had one of these spiritual experiences. So he had like, like the thing is, when you have one of these bottom of, bottom of your life experiences, you will notice coincidences, right? So, okay. Somebody dies outside his door on the same day he gets a job. Now, that could have happened to any one of us, and we would have said, oh, I got a job, and, and a guy died outside my door. Uh, nothing nothing unusual about any of that shit, right? It happens. <laughs> shit happens in the world. But when you have one of these transformative experiences, you all of a sudden, everything has synchronicity and significance, Right. And all of a sudden, you see all the patterns and everything. And that's what happened to our poor friend, the Raging Atheist. And uh, he, but he looks good. And he obviously had a transforming experience. He, he got his, you know, he managed to keep his, keep his kid and his, you know, his house. And he's doing okay. So I can't really judge him for that. But Matt Paul, fuck you, Ronnie. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. 
he's I don't know. I guess he's just trying to make peace with all the people that he was well, contentious with. So yeah, but he, yeah, I guess he does have a history of Matt Paul. But but does Matt Paul deserve, you know, making amends to Matt Paul? I, I don't think so. He's very harmful and toxic. Uh, yeah. But maybe now yeah. that he's had his reconciliation with Matt, maybe he'll just start ignoring him. Yeah, you know just have yep. no more to do with him because really there's just there's no good thing that comes of uh, associating with matt powell yep colon sheltering from icarus pre-disturbed from captive desk uh what do we got here an upside down world I, I, I we were commenting about that earlier video spiritual warfare yeah, and he's got the gun cabinet to fucking go into. But guess what, motherfucking conservatives? So do I. Fuck you. <laughs> By the way, anybody who has um, messaged or or commented or whatever in a negative way towards Knock, uh, like telling him he's just in it for the money or the attention or yeah, I, he's that's unstable, needs to probably apologize to him for that and all and just wish him the best of luck you know the best yeah. of um you know anything that things that would give him peace and personal stability and and contentment and wholeness um would is the thing that you want to send his way i don't think uh telling him you know that he's just you know he he's I don't really know what to say, you know, what, what you would call him. But if you're calling him, if you're being anything but encouraging to him, um, then then stop that and and just right. I, apologize I, to him if you need to and, and wish him the best. I've listened to this whole thing, and he is genuinely sincere, and he made a change in his life. And if that change keeps him from drinking and, and, and helps him, you know, pull himself up, Fucking great. More power to him. And it, also, he's not picking up any particular doctrine. He needs to stay away from people like Matt Paul because they'll shove something down your throat. But I mean, like, you know, what happened to him is that thing I've been talking about forever, that fucking spiritual experience where one moment everything looks like shit and you're making bad choices and all of a sudden you hit your bottom and all of a sudden everything changes to light. And, and you look on the positive side of everything and you start start making positive moves in your life. You start making amends and you start behaving better and you start being less fucking sour about life. And it happened to me and it had nothing to do with fucking God or religion. And it changes your life. So, I mean, we don't want to give him shit over that. So I think Knox a good guy. So anyway, yes, Ember is awesome, Leo. Vibrant addition to our community. He does fucking really good work too. So, pretty good. What is atheism? I don't know. I don't know what atheism is. Not sure. Uh, greetings in. Let's see. Okay. What do we got here? What do we got here? Scott Duke. It's like conservatives with student debt forgiveness. We had to pay our debt. How do you sort of our time? How dare you ask for free stuff? I don't know. I can't remember what we were talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did change my mind, Andrew, about streaming today. Andrew had a talk with Kent Hovind the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if he did. He say it went well. I how the how did that ever go well? But you can't talk to Kent Hovind. I don't know. Uh, AA does say men bridges. Maybe that's why. Yeah. I guess. I guess you have to apologize to everybody. But I mean, not live, right? He could have done that. He could have made a nine-step amends to Matt Paul. Like, even shitty people you're supposed to make amends to when you've done stuff. I did see your message about Hovind. Uh, I just talked about it, Andrew. Uh, but that was a while ago. Atheism when God not exist. Uh, Whoops. Have you heard about this one? I, I was going to open this stream up. So. Yeah, have you heard about this one? Uh, I too have heard that Matt Powell has a um, a giant banana in his backyard. He does, but it, and he I, may or may not. I put heard in places this. that are strange. Right. There, there are those rumors going around, and I can't confirm any of that. 
And did you in some way insinuate that um, of guy dying on somebody's door is nothing unusual? I don't remember you doing that. Well, yeah, it's uh, I, it, it is a little unusual, but uh, the place that I was visiting this weekend, it not so unusual. And I go to a grief group, and every week, some one or two new people show up, and they're they're their ch children OD'd on fucking fentanyl and died. And in Minneapolis, uh, there's one OD a week. So, I mean, it isn't like this shit never happens, right? Uh, it is, doesn't make news anymore because it's not newsworthy that hundreds of thousands of people are dying of fucking drug overdoses. And if they're dying in the public arena, lots of times they're going to be dying in front of doors. Mm -hmm. it, it is personally very rare obviously to have somebody die outside your front door but it's not unforeseeable yeah well i was walking outside and uh, just as i was walking under this tree uh a branch cracked and fell down and almost hit me and so you know so i i decided oh i'm not going to be an atheist anymore <laughs> we know the same thing actually happened to greg abbott and um really that's how you ended up in the wheelchair and Ooh. um everything and he I, I don't know if he believes in god or not he says there he you. does but i don't know if that's re for real <laughs> yeah yeah people not dying from drugs would be a better sign for a god right yeah. <laughs> like people not dying outside your fucking door so anyway uh i was gonna throw the link out here i'm not sure how long i want to stick around guys but you know so so forgive me if i fucking uh bail on you because i'm really tired i've been like i had a wonderful vacation but i did a lot of stuff in the last three days and Sometimes i had you a vacation from the vacation i only i didn't have any internet and i only had one bar on my cell phone and i could send text messages if i retried them like five times but i couldn't make phone calls and i was all alone in the woods well, you had a microscope and that's like the next best thing i did have a microscope did you use it I did. I well, fuck. There was a, there was a fucking bug with like it had like antlers or like an antenna that were twice as long as its body. And like I put him under the bug, and we got a bee and a whole bunch of plants. And I love the uh, I love going up north because that's where I grew up and I know all the plants personally. So I got to put them under a microscope. It was pretty cool. I had a good time. What am I doing? Oh, I'm going to put this message out there, this restream thing. Okay. That's about all I had. I just want to rant. So, James? Yeah, were, James, why don't you uh, tell us what's on your mind? You were ranting yesterday about something. Uh, yeah, I rant a lot. It's a thing that I do. Yeah, what were you ranting about? Uh, I rant so much I can't remember. Um, let me think. Yeah, this is the rant review segment of our of our live stream. Rant review. Yeah, well, we like Peter Griffin rant from the previous day. Something like Peter Griffin. What really grinds my gears? So I don't know. Look it up. Like what was what did I talk about yesterday? I have no idea. So uh, my question is: Did I did I uh, did I uh, live chat too much? Was that was I too wordy? Who? Me. Like I sometimes wonder if if my my stuff that I say is too distracting or whatever. But, yeah, nobody can see the fucking chat for some reason, James. You ought to go fix that because I'm not sure what the hell you did. Well, he's not live yeah. right now, but although I don't know, I don't know what the conditions are in which you're able to to rerun previous chat. Some yeah, people no can, some people can't. I don't know if you have to have certain number of subscribers or. No, your your previous chat always runs. I mean, it's it, it, it's always there. Oh, Lisa's here. Let, let her I'm in. Letting her in. Hey, Lisa, for truth. Hey. Uh-oh, she may be having connection problems. Oh, no, not the use, old. Use Chrome, Lisa, if you have it. Use Chrome. Restream curse. The restream curse. If you're using screen. Firefox, it doesn't work very de uh, dependably. And I don't know about um, Edge or whatever the... Is it Bing or Edge? I can't remember the, the Windows browser, but... Oh, I, I don't know what the... Yeah, Edge, I think. Yeah, fuck Windows. 
never use that stuff. Yeah, I don't know if Safari works with it or not. All right, so I just looked it up, and apparently yesterday I ranted about redemption and rebirth, what these mean to me. And so we had um, 58 views on that. We see, redemption and rebirth to me are, you know, just kind of age-old themes. They're themes in a lot of um, ancient um, stories and writings and things. And it's it's good to be open to those old stories, whether they be pagan or um, monotheistic traditions or what have you, be open to what they have to tell you. But ultimately, the um, redemption story is, is what has value to you and how well you embody it. Um, and sure, I don't know if that makes sense, so, but you know th th that's what struck me about the theme that you were doing. It, it gave me ideas and and things to reflect on about. What are we trying to do in the, the, you know, in the highest realm of our of our living experience? And uh, yeah, and, and we, still not working. Right. But so redemption and rebirth is what we were just talking about with uh, raging atheists, right? Right. That's, yeah. That's what they're talking about. We're, I mean, we're all after some sort, some form of uh, transformation, redemption, and. Um, so that's what I talk about Renewal. exactly on that stream. Yeah, yeah. And then like, so a couple of months, a month ago, I, I had a stream called How I Commune With and Worship the Spirits of My Ancestors Who Live Within Me. And I knew that people would be like, what the hell is this shit about? So um, maybe yeah. I'll to check that out later. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, but the thing is, the, uh, okay, have you heard the good news? The good news? Uh, the good news that is... That there is no God. Redemption and rebirth is available to everybody, and it has nothing. You don't have to adopt any fucking belief system or religion. Right. Right. It's something that can happen to people. Right. Oh, I talked too much by y'all. Yeah. Pragmatic crystal. Oh, okay. That, well, that was on your stream. He, he left. So I, I really wish I could see your chat. It sounds like you had a real lively chat. But uh, no, it's gone. Yeah, we yeah. did, and I was a little bit. I was probably a little bit too hard on. Um, oh, what's his name? I, lately, I've been calling him DeGriff. The freak. Or, the freak. There you go. Freak. I, yeah. I was probably a little bit too hard on him, but man, he just triggered me, and I wasn't happy. And he kept doing it, right? Like he didn't take. He didn't read the room. People are like, "Stop it!" And he kept going. So yeah. it just got worse. So yeah. Oh, um. What? What? Yeah. When they come in with um. Uh, total lack of awareness of what's going on what's being talked about you know and, and they just throw these dumb assertions out yeah, then right. you know get get out go to a different room where your stuff is receptive right now you're disruptive and maybe you know they believe in being dis a disruptor like that guy who tried to take the microphone and be aggressive at, at whatever rally or what have you right but um uh, yeah. Sure. But um, it, I'm sure he means well, right? But that you know, you, you need to read the room. If you're in a chat in a live stream for atheists talking about the, the ways we differ, you know, disagree with religion, and you know from experience what our views are about Christianity, what response do you expect if you go in chat and you start telling everybody that they're just denying Jesus and that they really know that Jesus is the truth and this is what the you know fix the problems of the world, you need to become a Christian. And of course yeah. they're going to get, you know, blow back on that. Of course they're going to. So. Well, the neat thing about uh, the Jesus thing is that if, like, forever uh, people have carved carved little stone animals or, you know, carved uh, talisman. I think they call it talisman. And you, and, you grab, yes. and you go out in the woods and you have this experience with it. Anyway, that's what Jesus becomes, you know, the like Jesus or Buddha or any fucking thing that you pick, as long as you pick something outside of yourself and you turn yourself over to like the, the universe at large, you can have these experiences. And it is a psychological phenomena that we need to fucking know more about. But it, it it's transformative. Drug addicts can sober up by doing this, you know, by just turning it over. And then saying, fuck it, you know, I'm screwing up. Help me. 
Okay. Sure. Can, can we hear uh, Lisa? I, we're getting an icon for Lisa. Oh, that's Leo. No, I think Leo, Lisa left again. No. Oh, really? Okay. That's Leo down there at the bottom. That You're probably making him dizzy. I'm making him dizzy, yeah. Hi, Leo. Yep. Fossil Howdy. field. Who's this that? person next to me? I don't think I know. Captain that's Dave. Okay, that's Dave. Dave. Yeah. Hello, Dave, what, by the way. What about fossil fuels? Hello, hello everybody. Hi, hi. Uh, Andrew likes the your, what you said about fossil fuels earlier. Interesting. You aren't mm. going down the industrial rabbit hole, are you? Are you? Huh? Are you? That was his. Well, here, let me put it up there for you to read. Read the screen as soon as I find it. No cracker for you, huh? Oh. So, Leo, how are, why do we call it fossil fuels? They're not really made from dead dinosaurs, right? Well, they're still made from the fossils of a variety of carbon-based. I think actually most of it probably comes from plant material, but I don't right. study geology and geophysics with respect to the prospecting for fossil fuels, so I'm really not sure. Yes, I, think, uh, I think like even smaller organisms make up the majority, like um, plants um, make kelp or bacteria or what have you. Also, I should probably clarify, I wasn't really talking about fossil fuels. I was trying to demonstrate a very important point to Nathan. Um, that he wasn't catching on to, which is fine because I don't think most people would. Um, it's it's a concept within his historical materialism, which is a feature of Marxism, the, the feature of the historical analysis of the structure, dynamics, and development of human society specifically. Um, and it's it, it because a part of it is the idea that slavery effectively was an inevitable stage in human development because there was a point where humans needed that much labor in order to produce all of the things requisite to maintaining human existence on the planet 2,500 years ago. You simply couldn't do it if you didn't enslave members of your species. You didn't because you did not have any forms of technological advancement through which you could overcome needing to enslave people. And it wasn't until we developed that technology that slavery began to fall, fall away, with an example being the Civil War of the United States, which was not fought over slavery, um, whether to preserve it or otherwise. It was, it was a effectively a proxy war between the industrialists in the north and the landowners in the south as the United States slowly developed westward. The landowners in the south wanted to develop the land for farm and put their slaves on it so that they can maintain their material conditions and their wealth and their power. The industrialists in the north, however, didn't want that. They wanted the land for their factories, their mills, their mines, their foundries, all that stuff, so that they can make their money. So the Civil War was fought not because everybody woke up one day and said, Ah, oh, man, man, the slavery thing's kind of bad. It was the culmination of moving past slavery as a mode of production, as a way of organizing how humans produce things. We simply didn't need to use human labor anymore. And that was, it culminated in the Civil War and ultimately the ending of slavery. So Leo doesn't believe in the Baghdad battery powering Egypt. Huh? Yeah. But I was using fossil fuels to demonstrate that you can't like you just don't, jump. You don't know the Baghdad a, battery? No. Um, but that you can't just jump from from like a primitive society to a technologically electrically advanced society that doesn't happen there's a variety of developmental stages that inevitably must be undertaken you start you know you've got the stone age the bronze age the iron and steel age and then you slowly you know you keep developing you've got the enlightenment era the industrial revolution and now we're into the technological revolution which is continuing into ai and quantum computing and all that stuff how how would humans 900 years ago have developed electricity? They didn't know what the fuck it was. Like, you can't right. just say, well, but we could have just not done slavery. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> There's my rant for the evening. There will be a quiz tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I just want to interject, uh, Scott. Look who forgave me. Finally, 12 hours after I got home, Loki decided he forgave me. So. Takes a while. Aww. Takes a while to get forgiveness. 12 and hours. Does he go through a stage of, like, biting you and, like, no, he comes. He, he runs in the library, and then he comes out, and he hisses at me and bitches at me. So he's not going to like bite you intermittently for the no, next day or two. So okay, it's, it's like it's like being married. Yeah, he runs back in the library, and then he comes out an hour later and bitches at me again. 
And then after 12 hours, he's like, okay, you can bet me now. Because <laughs> I left him for three days. I abandoned my kitties. Yeah, I told my son, once you understand cats, you'll understand women. Right. I know that <laughs> sounds terrible, but there you go. Now, with the, the, the yeah. Baghdad battery, though, apparently they were doing parlor tricks with it and producing a spark uh, back in BCE. So, oh. I've cool. also heard that like it might have been used for some some form of like making one form of metal stick to another or some chemical stick stick to the surface of a of a piece of metal or something like that. Oh, like an early soldering or something? Or uh, electroplating? Well, oh, oh, okay, electroplating, yeah. Oh, guys. I mean, they had really really simple computers back then too, so that wouldn't totally surprise me. I have something else, a little surprise. Wait, wait, hold on. Okay. You mean to tell me that, y- that y'all think humans like 2,500 years ago, like we're talking, you know, BCE, were doing electroplating? I'm sorry. No, the fuck they weren't. Yeah. No, the look, fuck they up, weren't. They up. didn't know what the fuck electro. They didn't know okay. what the elements well, hold on. You need hold to on, do. Leo. You didn't. No, you hold didn't on, hold up. Because I didn't even finish. Hold on here. I didn't even finish. You didn't even, know, didn't even, you didn't even what know what it was. Like zinc, sometimes nickel, maybe copper. They would have known what copper was. They might have known what nickel was. It's zinc. Battery. Might have seen zinc, but they didn't it's know. A battery. They were not doing these things. It's a battery. Oh, come on. Everybody knows that the reason God destroyed... I see, I see Goodall. It's, I just, see like, it's just like doing a lemon battery in uh, science class. It's okay, a battery. Did you read that? Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's it's the claim that um, like the ancient Egyptians or like ancient Middle Eastern cultures had, had batteries. You had your clay pot with a copper rod in it, and then it was filled with you know some sort of acidic... You could fill it with wine. You could fucking fill it with Vinegar. urine if you really wanted Vinegar. to. Vinegar. Yeah. You could fill it with... Um, lemon yeah. juice or some were, you know other fruit juices were, i doubt they that they were not doing saying this it was sophisticated or they ran a light bulb with it like on ancient aliens i'm just yeah saying, leo i don't give a shit it I'm is a battery can it you is make a battery, battery with you can make a battery with your own yep yeah oh, the, i can't believe wasting the, all mine by flushing it that's i mean it's not going to be a very good battery my son's my son's science project for the science fair we made an egg carton battery we put lemon juice in there and mm-hmm. we ran we ran twelve cells, and then we had it light up with the school colors and LEDs. Would it charge my phone? Uh, eventually. <laughs> okay, Bor- you Bor- don't get a lot. You don't get a lot of amps with a simple battery. That's the problem. So Bor- you can get voltage, but you can't get amps. So, and Bor- LEDs Bor- about oh, it. Serious? Is this a serious conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I don't it can be so. both. Okay, so Paul Craddock of the British Museum said, quote, the examples we see from this region and era are conventional gold plating and mercury gilding. There's never been any irrefutable evidence to support the electroplating theory, end quote. Right, but is the Baghdad battery a battery? I doubt it. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing with it. I'm just saying that they found these things and they found more than one. So they were using them for something. And then David A. Scott, who's a senior scientist at the Getty Conservation Institute and head of its museum research laboratory states, quote, there is a natural tendency for writers dealing with chemical technology to envisage these unique ancient objects of 2000 years ago as electroplating accessories. But this is clearly untenable for there is absolutely no evidence for electroplating in this region at this time, end quote. Right. Why didn't any? But why did none of these people write this down? Why didn't they write down the processes? Why didn't other people do it? See, these are the problems with these one-off I, I instances of grand that technology was just, that, that was just some thousands Scott of mentioned. years ago somehow had. No, that is was that just yeah. thing we Scott find these artifacts, that, but nobody just, writes anything down. Off, nobody else is using it. I, I just Leo, haven't Leo, finished Leo, what I'm down. saying. It's I'm calm. I'm just trying to finish what I'm saying. I haven't finished. Thank you for getting interrupted, and I don't know why. So I'm in the middle of speaking. I, I don't when, need to take pills. I just need to be allowed to finish. You guys know this. The one thing that bothers me is when I'm in the middle of a sentence and somebody else starts talking. I wasn't going there. I wasn't going there, Leo. We never meant to go that it was all that. Okay? Yeah. Never never this meant to that say discussion. that. discussion. Well, no, but it, it is a fact is, that I was being overtalked, and that bothered I'm, me. I'm just saying chemically it's a battery. Well, we don't know that, and experts seem to disagree with that. 
well, by the side, I don't know what they were using it for, but who the hell cares? When you put that, when you put the metals in the solution, ah. <laughs> it it produces electricity. So the question is, what were they doing with it? Oh no! Oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, I love when you see. I, I love when you claim your calm, Cleo. <laughs> Well, no, it's just that you guys mistake passion or like some slight intensity for Honestly, like, oh, I love you, Leo. Calm. I love you, Leo. I, I'm a fan. Like, I'm sorry. Don't that, worry about and it. And I don't, I genuinely don't mean to offend when I say this. I really don't. But I'm sorry that you don't really understand autistic people. Yeah, we don't. Like, I can't tell you how many times in my life people have claimed I'm acting or behaving a certain way that I'm definitely not simply because they're misreading me because they don't know how to read autistic people. I, I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off, Leo. I was just trying to cut you yeah. short to explain we oh. weren't going there. Yeah, I didn't mean to go all. that loud and that wild. Um, now that you're on the subject, are you plagued, Leo? Like, if I get, like, if I'm talking to my sons and, and they, 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 they're they twins and they can, have, like, go on, on and on, if I have something that I have to say, I can't hear anything, I can't do anything, I become obsessed with getting it out of my Tunnel head. vision. Yeah, something like that. But do you experience that? I mean, yes, that... a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know the feeling, and it's fucking frustrating. So. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we all apologize for, for fucking you. Yeah. Yep. We just got to understand the formula, I guess. Anyway. Uh -huh. so Andrew. So where did so so did you touch Kent Hovind on the doll, or did he touch you? <laughs> That's why I wanted to hop on, and just in case Matt Powell is listening, you're a disgusting human. <laughs> I, I doubt it. Uh, no offense, Speed, but I, I highly doubt that. Well, it just it just got launched out into the universe, so. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, how, how was your conversation with with uh, pr with Professor Holden, Doctor Holden? <laughs> uh, yeah, Doctor Holden. Yeah. Uh, well, the 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 part I discussed those topics with him, I think I did pretty good overall it i was hoping to do uh uh use how do i want to put it some of the rhetoric or, or some of the the tactics let's just say for lack of a better word that i used during that one discussion where i uh was teaching him about alien deposits and he kind of got uh seemed to get a bit flustered about that as well and that was kind of apparent here he was like <laughs> well what was really funny to me and and i won't just talk about it further because everyone can go watch it there uh is at, at one point he was saying okay we we need to move to a different topic because the audience isn't going to understand this it's too technical yada 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 <laughs> and and that just that that was really funny to me a, because it suggested to me that he was getting bored. Of, he was basically admitting that he was getting bored of the conversation. He didn't know how to respond. And it was also funny because, like, the rest of the the live stream was basically about technical, other technical topics. And that's kind of what they talk about anyway, standing for truth. And, and Matt, anyway. Uh, Is this stream? All the, and that yeah, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Wait, that's what Matt looks like? Wow. Yeah, that's what he looks like. Yeah, you haven't seen him? What the? No. I don't think I've ever I I'd ever actually physically seen him. Oh, we're not going to do this right now. He's a breatharian and a fruitarian and That's uh, great for him. Yeah, he always looks like No, that's not Matt. Powell. That's Matt words. um Matt the fruit bat. Um uh, Yeah, Matt the fruit bat. So I don't that's even part know of his the, last. That's part it's of the SFT Powell, team, though. yeah. Trying to figure out where you where you came in, Andrew. So, oh, it was the first hour, but I I didn't know you want. Uh, I wasn't planning on revealing it right now. If no, that's what you want to do. No, we don't have to. I just wanted to. I just wanted to find out where you came in. So you were in the first hour, eh? Oh, I Andrew, can't remember that match last night. There you are. There you are. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, I came in a little after apologetics came in, and then we had like a forty-hour conversation. I would reckon. And I, and I looked it up, Leo. If you put vinegar in the Baghdad battery, it produces 1.1 volts on a multimeter. That's fine. Wow. That doesn't mean they knew that. 
I didn't say that. I'm I'm saying they had a battery almost two thousand years ago. I don't think they've had a battery. I think that what's going to define it as a battery is its use and whether they understand the technology. That's that's what I said. I don't think they did. That's what I said. What were they using it for? That was my question. But it is a battery. So okay, Lisa for truth, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh my god, we can. Hi. Uh, okay. How are you, Lisa? So, so you watched our videos? Did you have a comment, Lisa? Oh, did we lose? <clears throat> you? She may be going in and out on us. Yeah, it might be like uh, maybe maybe uh, like the cabin I stayed at where you have one fucking bar. I I was like driving through this vast <laughs> swamp up in northern Minnesota looking at my phone while I was driving and all of a sudden I got two bars and I slammed on the brakes and then I went back to one bar and I, I, I don't know. And I, I was like desperately trying to talk to some human being. <laughs> it was, who are we talking about? Uh, I, huh? I, I was up North and I had no technology. Okay. I can hear you now, Lisa, a little bit. I, s- I spent three days with no internet. Don't you feel bad for me? I mean, how did I how did I survive up there? I don't fucking <laughs> special gummies. Yeah, I got a text from you, Andrew, and I just looked at it and it, like I couldn't text back or anything. So, yeah, special gummies are. Oh, okay. Yeah, three strange days. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I, I was just saying if if you did actually get it because it usually respond back pretty quickly so yeah that, that clears that up can i add something about the baghdad battery oh yeah. no we're yeah. going yeah. Yeah. Baghdad battery. what do we yeah, get we we have uh we have a it's ton of science. examples <laughs> yeah we, we have a ton of examples of humans making thin metal scrolls writing on like chiseling like punching writing into them rolling yeah. them up and putting them in clay pots just saying really yeah yeah. yeah, aren't some of the Dead Sea Scrolls written on copper? No, not the Dead Sea Scrolls, but there, but there are. There are uh, there's, there's something I can do I'm about that. Sure, at least one. I'm gonna have to look that up because I thought yeah, like and, one and of the Dead there, Sea Scrolls was in copper. There is a famous old text that is part of the Old Testament that gets lumped in with them, but they weren't found in the same place. It has a different name. I'd have to look it up to. Uh, it is one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, but yeah, it differs significantly from the others. Whereas the other solar scrolls are written on parchment or papyrus, this scroll is written on metal. Copper image, mixed with about 1% cross, tin. Cross-section image from the museum is there's a tube with a rod through it. Yeah. That's how you store scrolls. Oh. Good to know. Oh, I love how I love how Ox spells scrolls here. That's why you should spell scrolls. Reminds me of scrotum. That's the first word that reminded you of. Yeah, that's the first thing that came to my first mind. First we had foreskin, now we got scrotum. I'm just starting to think that maybe maybe speed likes Dixon. Maybe? I don't know. You think I like Dick? I probably do. I didn't say I said Dixon balls. I like mine. I, I really enjoy them. <laughs> Always, yeah. have. Always been a fan. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, that it's not a scroll or what I'm not, I'm just saying that's one of those oddities. That's all the dead scrolls. <laughs> yeah. I'm just pointing out like any one of those other examples in history that we have where people made a scroll, rolled it up on a rod, put it in a jar. All of them would do the same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. They get a little buzz reading their scroll. Maybe that's how religion got started. Uh, they- it could be. Put some lemon juice or wine, <laughs> wine in there, and got a fucking battery going, and they like, wow, they put, Jesus. They put their tongue, they put their tongue on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You gotta so put your tongue on it. Your religion started Everybody from people to. being stoned on electricity. Okay, I'm sorry, Lisa, but yeah, it, it, it's going to be really hard for you to converse with this group if you got a lag. Oh, sorry, Lisa. Yeah. But yeah, is, am I lagging? How's my audio? 
You ought to go uh, smile, Andrew. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Looks like I'm lagging on my screen. I don't know why. We're all lagging a little bit. We're lagging. Yeah, I've been lagging since, oh, 2008, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Bunch of hey, Orge. Orge. Stephanie Helms, good to see you. There's a link uh, pinned up there if you want to come on in. Sausage Fest. I wandered into. Yeah. We, well, we had. Come on now. <laughs> uh, fucking sausage. I it's like now sausage. Saturday night. The atheist except it's Friday. Yeah. Is, oh, is it Friday today? It's Saturday somewhere. I have no idea. That doesn't count. It's fr no, no. Th this is not Saturday night at the atheist. This is Friday night at the Lactheist. The Lactheist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it, it, it just doesn't have the same ring to it, though. Yeah, but there's a. I missed that term. The term needs to come back. Yeah, and it can't be snatted, it'd be fnatal. And that doesn't sound right. <laughs> so I wonder if I can show this. Oh, apparently Grayson is debating Raw Matt right now. Yeah, really? Not, yep, on Donnie's channel. Oh, and he's, my God. But well, what, I mean, is, uh, what is Raw Matt's last name? Is that a known thing? Yeah, it is. Uh, what the fuck is that? I forgot. I blanked it out. But it is, it is a known thing. So, I, I guess I guess I'll just not try to remember it because a that means I'll probably remember it in the middle of the night when I'm in bed asleep. Yeah, he's got his name on his book. That book with Taylor. Him. Okay. Yeah, okay. but isn't it on there as Raw Matt and Standing for Truth and not their yeah. actual names because they're weird. Yeah, the, the books I saw on like Goodread or whatever that list um, all said Raw Matt. But uh, I did find something that said Matt Naylor, but I didn't recognize it as him or remember it as him. But yeah, I think it is. So look at this. This alien star. You see that? Is it dark? Alien star. That's what the sun looked oh. like in Minneapolis because, yeah. of the, uh, because of the Canadian fires. I mean, isn't that fucking oh. incredible? That's amazing. Hey, Orge, if you're in side check, can you, uh, if you don't mind, can you summarize how the that debate's going so far? Like, any interesting points been brought up yet or not really? I'm just curious. Is it on uh, Modern Day Debate? No, it's on SFT's channel. That's, yeah, Donnie's oh, got a... Mark, not, not much better. Mark, I... Reed, Mark Reed's going to be on, like, next week. I oh. wonder, can it, can an asthmatic sue Canada? Yeah, right. Because I couldn't breathe up. I was up in Eveleth, Minnesota, about 60 miles south of Canada, and I got out of the car, and I couldn't fucking breathe the air. It was like smoking again. It's like, holy shit. An ex smoker oh. could sue them. <laughs> like, fuck. I predict that Grayson is getting a gish gallop from Ramat. Probably. And the speed of the lie uh, is slowing him down a, a, a bit, slowing Grayson down a little bit because he has to respond to those lies yep. unless he has a different strategy um, planned. I wonder if we're going to get another gem from Raw Matt uh, compared to the, the whole element sinking through the crust of the earth and that's how we date things. <laughs> oh, here it is, uh, the live the live thing going on right now. Uh, well, you do that. SFT is going to be mad at you. Uh, fuck F SFT. Uh, I could care less about his anger issues. Yeah, what's on his mind is is really, yeah, really the the m minimal thing this world needs to think about. Yeah, the wonderful. Yeah. Thing, you got 104 people watching this, and 97 of them are not listening to Grayson at all, and they're buying everything Raw Matt is saying. And so, Kristen, uh, you, you know, all, all you people that like go on this channel and and do this stuff, uh, I kind of like I have a little bit of a problem with the economics of, of going on his channel and doing these things. But I guess it gives us material to laugh at. But, mm. but well, I mean, well, that's the, the depressing thing is he's like got like what, 19,000 subscribers now last I checked. So. It's it's yeah. not really helping. Yeah, well, that yeah, that isn't that many people for that many subscribers. But he's got a lot of Christian subscribers, and he's building a ministry, and he's coming for you. So, yeah. 
the the last thing I I, I do want to say on the the stream where I had that discussion with Hoven the other day, and I'll shut up after this, uh, is like the man the the side chat was really throwing out some rude comments directed towards me. <laughs> I'm kind of flattered by that because I haven't really gotten that much attention over at SFT's channel very much lately. But like, well, do you need me to curse you out ever so often when you come up on here? Hmm? Do you need me to curse you out a little more? You know, just yeah, insult you some. Not, not that kind. Okay, that, I can do it on the yeah. side you, chat. I can do it. You evolutionist. <laughs> you evolutionist. I just want to help. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay, there it is. So I'm gonna. Well, run. You yeah. know what? You know what Donnie's up to. Well, he knows how old Kent Hovind is. Uh, oh. Yeah. He's, People he's who call you. People who call you an evolutionist as an insult is like people who use the word socialist as an insult. Ah, whatever, you damn socialist. It's like, yeah. Wait, is well, that an well, insult, buddy? Was that was that was that was that what that was supposed to be? Or basically calling us woke. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm awake. How about you, motherfucker? You know, you wait. I liberal. just despise those darn stamp collectors, don't you guys? <laughs> I say, have you ever looked up what liberal means when you try to use it as an insult? It's no, <laughs> it's not an insult. I'll, I'll take being called liberal. Well, as well. I would take I would take offense to being called a liberal. I'm not going to lie because I'm not a liberal. I'm not some dirty fucking cucked wannabe fucking feigned civility politics so I can maintain <laughs> the status quo I'm comfortable living in. I'm a fucking leftist. All right. So yeah, if somebody calls me a liberal. I'm like you're dumb. <laughs> Are you smoking cloves too? Uh, no. Well, what kind of clothes, Dave? <laughs> but yeah, no, liberal generally is not an insult. Like, I would much rather be a liberal than a conservative. Like, let's get real here. And history bears this out. Like, literally at no point ever in history ever, period, ever, has conservatism and right-wing politics actually meaningfully progressed human society forward. Literally. No one, anywhere, can find no, me a single example of when that's happened. Not one, not ever, because it never has happened, because they don't I do that. Certainly not right now. I disagree, because we have a very different idea of what conservative means. Well, uh, my yeah, understanding comes from, like, basic modern political philosophy. I don't know, yeah. Leo. This almost sounds like a contradiction to me, because just a little while ago, you were saying how much we needed slavery at one point in history, and that sounds like far-right politics to me. That hey, sounds like Stephanie. what politics? Far right politics. Far right. I don't think it does. It sounds like oh. historical materialism, which is Marxism, which is leftist. Well, technically, Marxism doesn't have to be leftist, but because of the structure of it, with the rejection of a natural order and social hierarchies and all that stuff, I would. I've never met a right wing Marxist. I don't think I probably ever will. I don't know. If someone's at the top saying, "Yeah, I don't want to do that work," you guys are going to do it, and you're going to do it for free, whether you like it or not. I don't know. That sounds far right to me. Right and left are political philosophies. So, Stephanie, did you see the beginning of our stream where we reviewed that video about the trans video that they showed little kids? Or, or not trans, it was like... Uh, pride. It was Pride Day. Your pride video, yeah. Um, did you know that? Good. You would have been really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> you would have fucking uh, I, I've, been, I've been spending more of my time doing what I love doing, which is sailing anyway. and doing it, doing it successfully. So screw it all, fuck it all. Well, best, once, best revenge I, is uh, best revenge is served cold. Yeah, I, I went sailing yesterday in a or the other day in a float tube out on uh, Bass Lake in nice. northern Minnesota. I was in a little one man raft mm -hmm. and uh, trying to drown myself and a paddle uh, boat. I did succeed. Stephanie, I, I think your way of doing it is actually even better. It's the um, the best revenge is a life well lived. Yeah. Well, I try. You know, it's I mean, it's, it's it's just way more fun arguing with the well, tilting at the wind. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Playing a stupid kids game for at at the age of sixty nine. You know, yeah. And what and you, you know. Taking names. It's fun. Take names. Like yep. <laughs> Outlive your enemies and dance on their graves. 69, man. You're young and young and yeah, well. I know. I can't tell you to go get off my lawn. That doesn't yeah, right. Work. It works in <laughs> most, most circumstances, but not for you. I have seniority. 
on the lawn. Yeah, it's true. Yep. But no, I didn't see that. I mean, I that's it's becoming just a fucking. If it weren't so serious, uh, it's just becoming a parody. If it's just becoming a parody of things, I mean, you get Trump up there. It's like giving the speech, and he he delivered the requisite anti-trans line, and and then he just sort of he caught himself and laughed a little bit and said, "You know, it's funny. I talk about taxes." They talk about taxes, lower taxes. People go. They talk about the trans people. People go like this. They lose their minds. And send you, and you know you people never heard about them five years ago. And Trump right. said that? It's all for yeah, yep. he did, actually. Yeah. He almost said that. almost yeah. word for word. Yep, I saw yeah. it. Wow, that's pretty fucking. Yeah, I've got the clip. I mean, I can play you the clip. Man, it's that's pretty fucking... woke. <laughs> It's it's Trump just you know work. it's the clear admission that this is all garbage. Mm -hmm. Well, no, nobody garbage. knew about trans trans people before Trump knew about it. I mean, yeah, you know, he's well, the greatest. I knew about seer. trans people long long before five years ago. But that's he is the greatest <laughs> trans. Nothing nothing he is, exists. He's before got Trump, the best before trans. Trump finds out about it. <laughs> <laughs> he, like when he likes to say, you know, there's. There's 120 countries. You know, there's more than 120 countries. A lot of people don't know that. I'm like, <laughs> he just I, I knew that. There's like 270 or something. Like he it's just like, found out that day, right? That yeah, he's always like, a lot of people don't know that. You know, like he's he's just so smart. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Like, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. When he when he said to the admiral that he was worried about all the digital stuff on the nuclear aircraft carriers. Salute to that guy for not saying, Mr. President, you're an idiot. <laughs> All the digital stuff? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the he cyber. Said, he, he kept his cool, and he said, well, Mr. President, we have a lot of electrical engineers that work on our you know, nuclear-powered aircraft. Trump doesn't they, know anything about They've got the it Navy. covered. He wants to put sails on them. He's, he's insane. <laughs> but I, I did want to say quickly, um, with respect to what Stephanie pointed out about what Donald Trump said, I don't know how many of you are familiar with things that George Wallace said, but what Trump said is literally out of the George Wallace playbook because George Wallace even said, like, I talk about roads. I talk about schools. I'm not quite, it's a paraphrase. I talk about all these things that have been a part of my political career. And, you know, I, it, it's not, there isn't much of a row from the audience, but I talked about the, and every, like everybody freaked out. He was, it was literally right out of the door. Like they are the like exact same quote. It's just instead of, you know, there's it's it's so, yeah. They're just they're just changing the people that it's being targeted against is all. Wesley Curry, the weird oh, and all right. Some all right. Funny I'm out. Let me know when. Wallace let me know when he's gone. At, at the end, uh, the weird thing about Wallace was that at the end of his career, he sort of was a little hemi demi semi regretful for the crap that really? he pulled, but. It did, doesn't make up for it. You know, I suppose that uh, spending the later part of your life confined to a wheelchair because kill you is. Yeah. It makes you help modify your. Well, you're all having the vision from Jesus Christ today. And also, I asked Jesus to shine the light upon you. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Really? Good move, Scott. Uh, yeah. Well, who, you know, who is Wesley? Like I said, read the room. Read the room. Who is Wesley Curry? He's no he idea. has issues. Okay. He's a well known. Uh, oh, there he goes again. Sorry, yeah. Wesley. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. We. Yeah. What the hell? Well, what? Where is that being said at? The light of Jesus. What the hell did he say? I don't know. Something about Jesus, God, whatever. I don't know why it's you the light keep of doing Jesus. It. All right. What if he'd been on his medicine? You know, well, I didn't maybe. know who the fuck he was, Leo. You've never seen Wesley before. No. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. Either that, well, or you I just don't have. remember. I have, but I don't remember because he apparently didn't leave much of an impression. So I don't know. Not worth my well, time. Well, who does that? <laughs> what he just did? Well, that's I, what he does. You know, but they they preach the Bible. It's like we know what the Bible says. 
I do want to get more Christian mm. in, but goddamn, when they come in with leading with that line, I mean, fuck, really? Come on. R- Re- remind me what he said. I, I missed part of it. Something about I'd have he to said about that Jesus he woke and... up today with the light, with the light of the Lord, which had nothing to do with anything that's happening in this room right now. So what the fuck was that about, man? Uh, yeah. Well, I woke up with the light of the universe in my. You know that stuff that irritated you the other day, James. Everything irritates me. I'm old. What, that's what that's like? what he was about to do. Was about he, to, he was po- about to pull out the free throws. Oh, <laughs> that's that <laughs> fundamentalist bullshit. Sure. There well, you go. Yeah, uh, what Leo says is is true. I think Wesley needs a level of care that. Um, hey Scott, now I did message you before I let him in, and you didn't respond right away. Well, you should have asked me. I don't see that. Where, where did you message me? Like in my phone? Yeah. Fuck. You know, and you're not, uh, <laughs> Scott's probably like, dude, it's in the other room, man. Charging. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, he's charging it up with a pot that, that he peed oh, in. Yeah, he's that's got it on the Baghdad battery. It's, it's, it's going to take, yeah, it's gonna take a couple of days, but we'll get there. <laughs> Stephanie went sailing. So. Oh, Stephanie. Yeah. Didn't mean to run you off. Oh, I, would like I mean, to... eventually these fundamentalists are going to learn that when they feel good, that doesn't mean that a divine magic spirit is making them feel good, right? Oh, I don't know, just... man. I, I saw the pictures of Amelia Clark at the premiere of Secret Invasion, Marvel's Secret Invasion, and I felt some things, and it's definitely a goddess right there, man. So I, I don't know if I believe what you're saying, James. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's Testimony. her name? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look her up. What's her name? Wait, what? Seriously? Yeah. Amelia Clark. Amelia with an E. Not Amelia, oh, Emilia. I'll be, B.S. Lewis has got a new video out. Why oh, can't the girl. why can't yeah. Gur see God? Oh, how <laughs> interesting! Uh oh, that sounds good. That's what awesome. was the first image that popped up when you searched? I'm kind of curious. Oh, when I um Game of Thrones. Oh, of course, oh, of course. Yeah, go fucking figure. Yeah. I mean, she did just carry the whole fucking show on her back for eight seasons, but yeah. I've never seen Game of Thrones. Of course I can't. not. Well, if you did, you'd probably agree with the statement I just made. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking now, and yeah, I can understand. I, I understand. You want to remind me who B.S. Lewis is again, please? Please? Who B.S. is? Something? Yeah. Yeah, is he a, like a Christian or what? No, 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 no. Far oh. from it. Okay. He, he got an Atheist of the Month award. Oh, okay. okay uh, he's in the group that you Where ain't in, go? Mike. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Yeah, I'm really. Yeah, sure. Moy. Uh, if it's yeah, if yeah, it's nowhere near a scientific topic, Andrew normally bails out on us. He bail. He bailed. Yeah. yeah. Well, so well, he said in the chat that there were some other things that he wanted to talk with. I didn't know if he was going to come back well, in or what. Now that he, Wesley's gone, BS Ooh. does little like uh, animated videos and. He, he does. He, he did one on the bread of life that he did a parody of the facts of life. It's the bread of life. So at some point, I'm hoping to be talking with Daniel J. Nicholson, uh, professor of biology, about this book and the other two books. It's a trilogy. It's called Life Itself by Robert Rosen. And uh, it should be pretty good uh, because uh, there is a mention of Goodell's incomplete completeness theorem. <laughs> why did why did you just do that? What's that? What did I do? Uh, so that's one of the no, that's yeah. a James. Amelia. She Amelia. she looked so goddamn cute and adorable in that little sundress. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about her in a sundress. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So she was 35 when this article was written last year, and it says she's had two aneurysms. In yeah, she had two life threatening brain aneurysms. In, Two, yeah, and wow. sixty. According to a talk, that she had a talk with an African neuroscientist or neurosurgeon or something, and he said, forty to sixty percent of the people who get these do not survive, and she had two. I hope she's living her life. That's what her whole charity, Same You, is about: um, rehab, neuro rehabilitation for people with brain injuries. That's how both my parents went. Damn. 
Yeah, my mom had two aneurysms and she survived both of them, so, which was pretty interesting. Um, uh, my mom was here for dinner, went home, and something popped in her brain, so. Yeah. I uh, was, not a, remember. Not, not a bad way to go. I was hitting on a girl at, at an AA meeting about, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, and uh, she was complaining about a head, headache, and she went to the, we went to the meeting, and then she died right after. It was like, it, that really fucking shook me up. But anyway, here's so my speed, girlfriend. Speed, I have a question, a science one. What's the difference? And I'm speaking about specifically the brain here. What's the difference between a hemorrhage and an aneurysm? Uh, I, th I, th I think they're probably much related because an aneurysm is a swelling and then eventually it pops. And then the hemorrhaging is the bleeding that causes the swelling, isn't it? Kind of, uh, or something like that. Or is it the other way around? After it pops, the swelling is caused by a weakness in the veins, and your blood pressure blows it up. And then, if it pops, you'll end up with a brain hemorrhage. It'll kill a whole huge. Yeah, the pot, yeah, the, the blood no, okay. running out because is hemorrhage. The technical term for what she had was a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, with my mom, it was bleeding, and then eventually the pressure builds up. Well, that would be, and right that's under, what kills you. Yeah, that would be in the layer right under the skull, you know, where the uh, and, and it yep. probably pressed down on a, on something really important. And uh, and there's a point of no return where they they won't even drill a hole in your head or anything. That's yeah, they managed to save my mom from two of them. So I just ha just had a MRI, three MRIs, and. Uh, and found out I do not have an aneurysm. My uh, my lifelong best friend was 58 years old, and he was. Uh, they found out he had liver cancer and throat cancer it spread to his liver, and they told me he was going to be, you know, die within a few months. And that if the cancer hadn't got him, he also had an aneurysm that would have killed him. And then he died the next day. It was fucking bizarre. Cancer, cancer. An old man turned 98. He won the lottery and see died the next day. See my girlfriend? It's a black fly in your Chardonnay. It's a death row pardon. Two minutes. If y'all don't know this song, I'm virtually slapping the fuck out of you. Yeah, I know that song, but I can't think of the artist. And right. isn't it ironic? I have the CD. Don't you think? Oh, uh, yeah, well, hold on here. In, in the words of legendary Canadian singer-songwriter Alanis Morissette, you oh, ought to know. That's Morissette. Okay. That's that's how old I am. I have the CD. Now that see now, that I bought it. I bought it when it first came out. That's the '90s alternative. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, '90s Alanis alternative. Morissette is the shit. I love. Female Wait, doorknob head says she's perky. Too much perk in a tiny, tiny pet. You talking about my future wife, buddy? We'll go rounds, all right? F female singers are one of my things. <laughs> I can just listen all night. doesn't matter what, well, almost any kind of genre. I and sandals. You like not Taylor Swift? Fucking comment. That's why I say almost any genre. <laughs> That's weird. I would not. What is with people's obsession with P? I don't get it. Let's not talk about it. I mean, if that was the only way I can get her naked, maybe. But other than that, I have no interest in that. Uh, yeah. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> get her I said, that's the only, if that's the only way I can get her naked, sure. But other than that, no, thank you. I'm still, <laughs> now, no, I'll pass. Of, that's gross. That particular kink, is it the guy who wants to be peed on or is it a, the, the we female who wants to Why pee are we talking on about urinal fetishes? I would rather not. I don't know. It's, it's kind it's of just, gross. It, it's just a question that popped into my head because hey, I don't know whose kink it, it is really. So... I don't think it matters. It's people's kink. Some people have the kink and some people don't. Some of them are men and some of them are women and some of them are other. The sub uh, hold the sub holds all the power. My, my guess would you... say it's the um, it's the uh, guy's kink. It's I actually I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know. It seems pretty know evenly either. split on that one. It does make me wonder what Jesus's kinks were. I'm just saying. Hanging, hanging, oh, around, lots, hanging around with lots of dudes and prostitutes. <laughs> that's a 
That must have been what I got of a party. <laughs> Very well oiled dudes. Well, he, he kept going, you know, like he went out in the for, in the wilderness and wouldn't eat anything. It sounds like he's just into extreme pain, you know, extreme circumstances. So he uh, went walking in a lightning storm. Of course, he was walking on water at the time. And then, of course, there's that little cross thing. And before that, getting beaten. With, I, I, the whip. I, last year I went out in a really severe lightning storm and I was cleaning my ditch and, 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 uh, and I basically did the God, if you're up there, strike me dead. And, uh, nothing happened cause he's a weak ass fucking God. He can't even get rid of answers and atheism. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Either that or it doesn't exist. Well, I went out, I went out to light the grill yesterday and it started thundering and I stepped back inside the garage cause I don't have that kind of luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. With my luck, I'd survive, and I would just be totally different, shall we say. Yeah. Well, your food would be cooked a lot more quickly. Some people have been struck more than once by lightning and fucking survive. Hey, Leo saw my butt picture. It was that was, huh? was a fine That's butt. A very nice. Oh, I did, I did see your butt picture. Oh, it's great looking. Yeah. Like. Hot. Looked really I hot. Did tornado warnings going off and i'm out there going oh come on let let my let me enjoy my butt before the tornado hits <laughs> uh, so guys i hate um, I, I i hate to spoil the party but uh i really want to get out of here so this is why old guys shouldn't host streams on friday yeah, nights seven fucking viewers i mean jesus christ so? yeah. who said we're doing this for the viewers well, man? Did, did you have technically did you, we're not hosting a stream apparently did you have a good uh, couple of days off then, Mike? I had the most fantastic time I've had in years up there. I did for th three days, and uh, the last day was the last evening was the most spectacular. I actually saw fucking stars because in, in Minneapolis you can't see stars anymore. You can see Venus, that's it. Fucking nothing else. And I saw stars. I'm so happy. Oh, by the way, apparently uh, Gutsit Gibbing is on her way to Kenya today or maybe oh, yesterday. She made it. She made it. Yeah. She raised her, her funds. Cool. Hey, you're back, Stephanie. If you uh, did, did we offend you in some way? Did did you leave out of uh, no no my I, you offended my computer or the or the fire of god's holy spirit shut me down i think it was I god's wrath which 